Hello, good morning, sir. This is the uh, KJ Pitaria and K S Patel presented the subject uh, that is microcontroller. And the topic we have chosen the basics of microcontroller 8031. Initially, we are going for uh, three types of uh, uh, characteristic of a microcontroller. So, as we see in slide, the slide uh, that we have downloaded from the internet. We have not made actually. Uh, first component we can go for CPU, that is central processing unit. It basically the function return execute information stored in memory. Second one we can say input of a blocks or it can be known as a device. So the number ports are there. That is, uh, uh, those are actually 32 pins. And the next uh, very good component and very important component you can say memory. We can have the differentiation here RAM and ROM. So read only memory and random access memory. Now as we see whenever we are connecting CPU we need to have a data bus and address bus uh, to connect any type of peripherals. You, you can say uh, in this as a, an example monitor, printer, uh, uh, even switching uh, devices like keyboard as well as we can have memory. The memory can be considered as RAM and ROM. So this may be considered uh, by using data buses and addresses. You can have uh, multiple signals for that. Uh, uh, no, those are known as control signals. Uh, it's called, known as also control bus. Next, here in this slide, uh, total microcontroller, microcomputer uh, uh, design has been shown. So CPU is connected with RAM, ROM, printer, disk, monitor, and keyboard. Here, if we consider microcontroller, so data bus, address bus, and control bus, all are there. The data bus can be bidirectional, address bus can be unidirectional, the control bus that is as per the requirement. Now functions of uh, address bus, data bus and control bus. So you can uh, we can see that the address bus basically one directional, unidirectional type of signals. So here the line has been written, the address assigned, that means the assignment should be given, must be given. Then data bus that is bidirectional, that means it sends the data as well as it takes the data. Next one, the control bus. It will control the perfect uh, CPU, how the information can be sent or can be taken. So data size uh, basically related with the uh, related, uh, that is as good as highway lines. More data buses mean more expensive CPU and computer. And as we said, uh, data buses are bidirectional. The data bus size varies from 8 to 64 and processing power of a computer is related to the size of its buses. And this slide is for the address bus. The more address buses available, the larger the number of devices that can be addressed. That means you can connect more number of devices if you have more number of address buses. The number of location with which CPU can communicate that is always equal to various to X where x is address lines. So suppose you need to have four, you, or you are having four address lines, that means you can connect two raised to four, two raised to four address, address size. And address buses are unidirectional, that means you can, uh, the one can only assign. Next. Inside CPU, the very good component has been shown, registers. Register is, uh, register is basically used to save the data. The CPU uses registers to store information. Here, you, they have written information. We can say we can say uh, information must be the data in a pattern of one zero and one zero. In general, the more bigger the register, the better the CPU. The register can be uh, can be of actually the size must be of 8, 16, 32, 64 bit. So if it is of 8 bit, that means you can directly at a time transfer the data 8 bit. Either you can save, uh, either you can receive or you can transfer. That means 8 bit directly. In this particular slide, we can see now CPUs a uh, little bit zoom, the, that is divided in ALU, few components related with program counter like instruction register, instruction decoder, timing and control. Few registers are there, those are connected with data buses. So control bus, address bus and data bus are connected with few blocks. So blocks are required to have you required to process inside the CPU and ultimately microcontroller. So that is that of the flex two. Next function of ALU program counter and instruction decoder has been written. 
Any perform basically you can say that logical functions and or note gate you can uh, you can have the function of that within the ALU. Next point that is program counter. It will point out the address or uh, I can say the point out the address of the next instruction to be fetched or it can be executed. Next instruction. Next instructions address to be pointed out pointed out by program counter. It may be of size 8, uh, 16 bit or 24 or 20 or 24 bit that depends on the CPU. And the last one, the next one, instruction decoder which interprets the instruction fetched into the CPU. Next. Now from that uh, particular slide, we can move on to the next one that is actually related to the microcontroller. Microcontroller basically uh, consists of a CPU, RAM, ROM, input output port, timer or serial COM port. So these are the blocks that we can have within the microcontroller as even data bus and address bus is also connected. Next. This is the block diagram there where we can work with. Uh, this is the uh, block diagram of 8051, internal block diagram, you can say architecture 2. It uh, consists of the several blocks, we can say interrupt control on chip ROM and that is for code on chip RAM, timer 0, serial port, input output ports, bus control, oscillator, CPU, even the direction we can say, some, some are from the bad directional, the control signals are there, the crystal has been connected, four ports, uh, one of the serial port that is connected with transmission data and reception data, data buses also connected, external interrupts are there, even we can go for counter inputs too for the timer. Okay.